Um, but we'll go to our final speaker, Peter Wong from Hong Kong. So go ahead, Peter. Uh, first of all, I think uh, I have to uh, say I agree with uh, Barun for his statement that uh, we should not look as uh, merely looking at uh, uh, absolute uh, the snapshot where you are uh, in the index, uh, the real index. Whereas I think um, the uh, prosperity or actually uh, the, uh, the improvement uh, in uh, uh, economic freedom is a function of prosperity, even more relevant standing uh, position of where you are in the real index. So, uh, okay, so to start with my story, uh, I would like to uh, tell the story. A uh, real story just happened uh, in Hong Kong. Um, in April uh, 2012, uh, at that time, our new uh, chief executive elect uh, CY Duel. He said, when, because CY was always, uh, or still is, perceived as a populist um, chief executive. And uh, when asked uh, by the business community whether you would uh, use populist uh, welfare program to gain your uh, popularity back in April, he said, quote, I don't know what populism means. To help Hong Kong people have a better life, I embrace whatever the sun. End quote. So this is in April. And after he become officially our chief executive uh, since uh, July 1st, and in November, uh, he didn't say it uh, himself, but newspaper, very uh, incredible newspaper, say that um, they, they got the news from the administration. Uh, background is uh, Hong Kong uh, chief executive uh, tries to uh, really give out his, uh, deliver his uh, promise uh, during his election time uh, to 2200 a month. Um, to uh, low income, low people. But his opponents in the legislature demanded that you should not only give the $2,200 to the low income, low people, but you should give it out to all old people, even they are millionaires. So they, the, his opponents actually demand more try to block uh, his, uh, his uh, bill in the legislature. And he responded by, uh, well, the, the, the newspaper said, to counter the tidal wave of populism, the administration cannot give way, no matter how high the price it is. So what does it mean in this story? Actually, welfare populism fights back both manipulator as well as the receiver. Because for the case of CY, if I define him as the manipulator, he needs to give bigger dosage of welfare to achieve the same goal. It's just like uh, you know, drugs. Like if you, give, you have to give out more and more uh, to, to, to get the recipient more and, uh, and on the other hand, uh, receiver, receivers' reliance on welfare will deepen. Okay? In the sense that they might lose uh, their ability going back to the workforce. Um, there is a story um, um, in England, uh, Middle, Middlesbrough, England. Uh, Mid Middlesbrough used to be a uh, steel manufacturing hub uh, in England. Uh, since the collapse of uh, the steel industry, uh, basically the entire city uh, the economy uh, 
apparently quite a high number. I think it's hierarchical. They are private businesses, but they profit from serving welfare recipients. Um, within 400 yards, uh, you have like six, seven pizzas, uh, seven pizzas. Um, and um, you will see uh, welfare recipients um, at the age of 38. They are, they are very fat to the extent that uh, they need to be on the, 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 the low wheelchair and they get in and out uh, of these uh, six to seven pieces sharp and, and many of them they are actually third generation welfare recipients that they don't really know the meaning of working but the whole they learn from their parents how to pay the system to make their life out of welfare. And also, I would like to give you a myth, tell you a myth about uh, education. Here, the education I refer to higher education, whether it is the same uh, DAP can be applied to uh, higher education, that maybe we can discuss later. Um, Popular saying is that oh, education is good, so the government because education will make poor people and wealthier, so uh, the government should invest to, to, to create more more supply in the higher education. But I see uh, the expand of higher education by government is a means to delay unemployment. And when, because they, they measure the success of policy by how the new uh, number of new seats or number of diploma being printed, but they don't care about the quality of uh, students, uh, the graduates. And actually, when you look at uh, data from the United States, you, s you start to see an employment rate. Um, or, or uh, university graduate exceed the high school dropouts. So, and, and even worse is that you to create um, a victims uh, because they uh, the young people they, they believe they believe in the government that oh if I study more I have a diploma I will make more money but in fact at the end. They, they, they earn much less, and or even they refuse to work because uh, the expectation, the gap in expectation is too high that they, they try not to, they, they, they will refuse to work in seven years, and they, they refuse to work, uh, you know, living at workers, but they just, you know, they, they, they stay home and try not to work. And then that creates, you know, even more problems of more demanded data and they say, oh, this is social justice. Kind of sentiment being created. So, because of welfare populism, uh, you see, you know, in the developing nations, um, society is divided into productive and productive sector. And some, and even worse, the productive ones are either forced to leave the country or to join the unproductive sector. You know, in Hong Kong, there are numerous uh, people, hardworking people. They, they come to Hong Kong from or the UK, from any other you know, developed country, because not because they need to pay, pay high, high tax. Like sometimes they feel okay to pay high tax, but the thing is, if the tax money is being channeled to the third generation welfare receipt. And okay, if welfare uh, populism is so damaging, why do we still feel the world is wealthier? It's because we still have entrepreneurship and technology that bring that brings a substantial increase uh, in individual productivity gain uh, in the productive sector. 
to offset uh, the loss by the kind of early set. And, um, and also we have emerging markets that they try to enter, they all, I, I, I see a lot of people from the emerging markets, they try to be more productive, to make the change their life, to make their life become better, and that may have to also offset the laws uh, by some of the world's limitations. But there is no guarantee the game will be uh, actually greater than the laws if government continues uh, or increasingly populous or you know, increase the regulatory measures because you know, if you have more and more regulation that will supplicate uh, entrepreneurship as well as technological advancement. So, I mean, actually, when you see a lot of developed nations, uh, you experience long term GDP growth below 2%. Actually, sometimes I would question that 2% if you include. Um, a stimulus package, like for example, you dig a hole on the ground and you build it, that kind of GDP. Well, if you take that into account, you may have uh, GDP below zero. And what does it mean for a consistently GDP decline? Is when you think about civilization, when you think about when, when, when Google experienced. Uh, Revolution, you have substantial increase in individual productivity gain. And, and whereas now in the weakness, weakness uh, individual productivity decline, which is the opposite of us, uh, uh, progress in civilization. So, I mean, the key to keep um, civilization from the is that uh, the emerging markets uh, would uh, not be forced to import uh, new economic policies uh, from the developed world, like uh, you know, uh, tax harmonization or you know, sometimes. Uh, I, mean, I think the idea of Say um, some uh, uh, supranational uh, uh, institution like uh, uh, like uh, some agreement like Basel. Because you know, in the past, the world, like especially uh, before the collapse of the world SSR, um, Soviet Union, you have a different system. Uh, Is this, sorry, did you wrap up? Yes, sure, sure. Okay. I, I'm about to. So in, in the past, we have various system uh, working uh, at the same time. Whereas after the collapse of Soviet Union, the world is kind of uh, you know become one more like one system. And if that system proved to be not working, then it would be very detrimental. So yeah, that's a lot. Okay, thank you very much.